What's going on guys? My name is Round and Tic Tac. And if you're here from Diablo 4, welcome. I main druid 90% of the time. In last epoch, Primalist is kind of a druid. Although this video isn't going to be about druid in particular, and there's a reason for that. I've been playing this game for a decent amount of time, nothing too crazy, and I have five different different Primalists. Five of them. I enjoy every single one of them. But the one I want to show you today is hands down the absolute best build I've made for a brand new player that I've ever seen in this game that requires absolutely no uniques, does incredible damage off the cuff, and it is seriously the best build I've run in this game while just casually playing. I have not used any uniques, nothing in my inventory from previous runs, nada. Everything on this build has been found, solo self found, and it absolutely wrecks. So if you do decide to run a Beastmaster, because we were basically castrated from being able to run beasts in Diablo 4, then this is the build I highly, highly, highly recommend you check out. It is a ton of fun to play. It's just engaging enough to where you feel like you're still doing things, even though it's a minion build. And it is also a damage over time build, which is my second favorite build in any kind of ARPG. So check it out. I'll talk to you guys about why it's so good, how strong it is, and how you can build it yourself. Let's jump into this. Now, the reason I wanted to showcase this build in particular is because when I first started playing Last Epoch, I didn't realize how important certain items were to the general usability of a build you may be following, a build guide online, or one of your friends, or a different YouTuber, or anything like that. The viability of these builds, they have game-changing unique items that most of them you need to farm for. This one does not, and it is the fastest, hardest pushing character that I've probably ever made in this game. I'm doing content 25 levels above my current character, and it feels like a walk in the park. It is ridiculously strong, and it's only going to get stronger because they just released the patch notes, and our main skill is also getting buffed. There's a few ways you can run this build, but I'm going to show you the one uh, that I like playing with but I will show you a different version if you do not have a spear. You'll see why in a little bit. So let's jump into exactly what we're doing and exactly how this build works. As you can see, we are playing a Primalist. We are also spec into Beastmaster, which you guys will find throughout the campaign as you guys continue playing. We are using Summon Scorpion, which uses a skill called Venom Nova. This skill basically is like Frozen Orb from Diablo but in Venom form, and it comes from your Scorpion. The second thing about this skill is, as you saw, the little acid pool underneath the Scorpion after this finishes casting is actually much larger than it shows up on screen. It seriously is probably the size of this circle that I'm making with my mouse now. Uh, it just is currently kind of bugged, and the animation for it goes underneath the ground layer. Hopefully, this will be fixed with version 1, which releases in two days. This is our bread and butter ability and our main skill that we use throughout the entire dungeon, boss fights, whatever. We have multiple ways of proccing this, and as you guys can see, uh, it just absolutely shreds. I don't really have to do anything here, and my scorpion just kills everything in its path. It doesn't matter if it's tanky, it doesn't matter if it's a boss, it doesn't matter at all. It just absolutely destroys enemies. You can see that it has somewhat of a long cooldown, but in the build, there is a way to negate that fact and allow you to almost cast it every one second, if not more, which I'll show you guys as well. So that is the general gist of the build. We are using a scorpion and some other abilities to keep proccing its poison nova, which allows us to super clear and super farm as fast as possible. Druid, Primalist, Beastmaster actually also has one of the best traversal skills in the game with Fury Leap. It can go incredible distances, it can cover so much ground, and it can even go over some walls and obstacles to allow you to make some shortcuts. Uh, but we'll talk about the skills in just a minute. I just wanted to show you guys exactly what kind of build you're getting into. And as you can see on my inventory, I have zero uniques and everything I found in this run on this character has been farmed simply from just getting stuff to drop on the ground. So with a little showcase of what the build can do and how strong it can be with absolutely no uniques, let me break down why exactly this works. Let's get into it. I really do pride myself and do my absolute best on trying to bring you clear, concise, easy to understand content 
for your average gamer someone who doesn't play 16 to 32 hours a day and is able to grasp all of these concepts easily through a tutorial like this arpgs in particular get super confusing as there's so much to do and i want to make that an easier task for you guys to consume and hopefully i do well this is my first video on last epoch and the amount of stuff to cover compared to d4 is absolutely insane so i am going to be doing my best to cover everything clearly and concisely so let's talk about the skills first and exactly what we're using and why so as you level up a primalist and turn him into a beast master you will unlock the beast master skill tree the only thing we're really using here is summon scorpion and once you click on this you can further further modify your build any way you would like we are currently using a poison build but it's not a normal poison build about a month, two months, six months ago, I'm not exactly sure, although I have plenty of hours in the game, I did stop playing here and there for a while. They changed how damage over the time works, and it used to stack almost infinitely. Now it seems to be the faster you can stack damage over time effects, the bigger the number, the more damage you will do. So that is our goal here. It's not damage over time after a long period of time. It's a damage over time stack in a short period of time. And to do that, we're going to use every bit of poison damage plus scaling we can to absolutely shred things with our poison Nova. If you're brand new to this game, side tip. Don't worry about the numbers that show on the toolbars. I don't know if they're still bugged, but they were 100% bugged when I was playing this game constantly. Uh, this says it does 99 damage per second, and I'll just use it once, and you can see it does way more than that. So just keep that in mind. Don't take everything at face value. So let's start off with the Scorpion. We're going to go here and grab Health Gain on Hit and Poison Chance from Venomous Maw. Uh, in Venom Prey, your Scorpion deals more damage per stack of poison on the target. So this is 1% up to 30. So it's a 30%, I believe, multiplicative damage increase. It's actually insane. Uh, then we're going to go over here and get Noxious Carapace. And this just increases our poison damage again. Uh, our Venom Nova area, that is the circle I was talking about earlier, gets much bigger, does more damage. Uh, over here, the pool, again, what I was talking about earlier, uh, is going to get stay longer, which allows more stacks of poison to build up. And then lastly, we're just going to be going over here. Eventually, I want to put more points into my Scorpion to max this out, but I currently don't have the gear from it. Like I said, this is a fresh character, literally less than two days old, and I can't be happier with it. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to Swipe. Swipe is your main skill that you're going to be leveling up, and this is the only one that I would suggest doing in order. So as you're leveling up, you're going to be using Swipe a lot. It is the go-to self-sustaining Druid Primalist ability, and it is in almost every single leveling guide for a Primalist. Uh, what Swipe is, is the giant AoE attack that you can make bigger, bigger, and it does a ton of damage, especially in the early game. This combined with your first skill, Wolves, will carry you through at least to level 30 or 40 or 50. It can carry you to end game. But I personally haven't had so much success, too much success with a wolf build yet. But swipe, you're going to be leveling up probably first. Uh, Way of the Hunt, we're just going to make our damage go a little higher. Plus, we're going to be sustaining with the health leech. Then we're going to go over here and swipe deals more damage in a larger area. We absolutely want that. As you're leveling, I would probably max this. Respecking in this game is completely easy to do. Do not worry about it. I would probably max this until we get to the point where you really want to lean into the scorpion build um this is a kill threshold this works on bosses elites every single thing in the game and you will literally one shot bosses if they are under 14 percent health over here we're going to grab storm claw this is just extra damage every three seconds and it increases the area so it's really worthwhile to get uh down here we're going to get aspect of the panther and then feline hunter to increase our cast speed and our global attack speed and our maximum stacks that grant us uh damage global damage which is a huge modifier then down here we're gonna have bleed chance from blood beast rending and duality of nature now these six nodes are your absolute last ones you want to put points into these two are very very important these kind of are whatever if i'm being completely honest they're just the best what we can do claws of the bear 
is swipe deals significantly more damage multiplicative with other modifiers and slows enemies but it has a cooldown which this perk this ability right here turns your farming in the early game into not farming in the early game if you don't have a way to manage your swipe then you're going to have an issue farming if you take this perk too early then we're going to go up to primal resonance and this is what helps us with the scorpion so once you have the scorpion unlocked you can feel free to grab these two perks right here and this is when you use swipe and hit at least one enemy your nearest companion which will be the scorpion uses its companion ability and is restored to full health it's absolutely overpowered and it's incredibly insane when you have some cooldown reduction and your swipe is on a one second cooldown you can proc scorpion uh, nova by itself plus you can proc it with swipe and we have a third way to proc it which we'll talk about in a moment after that i would probably take fury leap focusing strongly on panther strike to get the cooldown as low as possible uh Hirat's protection because we want to be immune this is our escape ability this is our engage ability and being immune during that is fantastic fury's leap deals damage in a larger area and costs less mana we're not really using this to deal to deal damage but it being costing less eight less mana is a nice plus uh down here we're gonna go with ambush predator and that is the engage part you do 90 percent more damage when they are unaware and then over here gravity fury leap pulls enemies where you land this is to help our scorpion nova our venom nova to hit more targets in a tighter knit area and then down here the important perks are wings of endurance which is whenever we land us and our scorpion get healed for 100 and every time we land we clear all ailments poison bleed doesn't matter then we're, we're going to talk about war cry war cry is an interesting ability it's a very utility based i wish it did more i don't love it in this build i haven't found any reason for it to be necessary in this build but they're at the same time i haven't found anything else that can replace it which replacing skills we'll talk about in just a second but all we're going to take down here is we're going to make it a little bit bigger we're going to come down here and this applies frailty which makes them do less damage and then this is what we really want scorpion poison chance is up to a hundred percent and then any of these other perks you're fine this grants you invulnerable after war cry which is very very nice uh extra healing here cleansing negative effects once again and then over here this pulls in enemies instead of knocking them back once again for the reasons we discussed and then lastly the big one is war cry has significantly shorter cooldown but no longer has a guaranteed stun freeze or fear that's fine we're using it to proc bleed and to heal us not for any of the other stuff now where this build does vary is i wanted to lean into the poison theme a little bit extra and lucky enough for us serpent strike allows us to do that all the way over here we have venomous union when you lunge forward with serpent strike if you have a primal scorpion it casts its companion ability venom nova twice once centered on itself and once centered on you so just think about the insane amount of damage we can do this procs it twice one for me one for him i can press my q ability and proc it one more time and then i can swipe and cast it one more time i can cast four venom novas that are supposed to have a seven second cooldown in less than a second it absolutely shreds things and this is the more fun way to play this build we'll talk about the, what exactly what i mean when we get to the items but this is how i enjoy playing this build but i'm not going to tell you it's the absolute best you need a spear to make this work so you need a very specific piece of gear to make this feel good if you have that piece of gear this is how i suggest to proc this uh we want to take constrictor because we want to have extra poison damage with max constrictor perks we want cobra lunge which is allows us to proc venomous union then i came down here and grabbed poison chance and then serpent venom which leads us into dread fang which leads us into shattered immunity for boss damage this is just a huge multiplier for bosses in particular anything with a large high pool of health so that's how i did this but let's talk about the other way you can if you do not have a spear to use on this build etera's blessing is the other thing that you're going to spec into and the very important perks are simple you want to come over here and get all the way to caustic renewal this allows your poison chance to go up to i think 150 percent 
extra, which is huge after you cast a Terra's Blessing on your minion. And then down here is the really, really important one. When a Terra's Blessing heals one of your companions, it has a chance to refresh its active ability cooldown, but a Terra's Blessing costs more mana. So what you can do with a Terra's Blessing is spam your Q, which is Venom Nova for me, and then press your Eturo's Blessing and then spam your Venom Nova back and forth, back and back, back and forth infinitely. And it does insane damage. My issue with that is twofold. To really be able to do that easily in the middle of a fight, you kind of have to really keep your eye on your scorpions and not the enemies. And just like most ARPGs, the end game gets really one shotty. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of why I took it off. I could never find my scorpion. I always missed casting the spell and it never really paid off for me big time. The other reason I am not a huge fan of it is just that the build is so tanky that I don't really need the heal. And I feel like sometimes if I'm able to get off more damage more quickly, I'll be able to move through the mission a little bit faster. So that is why I went with Serpent Strike, but it's completely fine, especially if you don't have a spear to be able to go with a Turo's Blessing. That's how I ran this build originally. With our skills out of the way and me on a quest to make this video as fast as humanly possible, but getting all the points across, I'm re-recording this. So let's just jump into it. And we're just going to go over the major ones and things you need to know. There will be a link down below with a full fleshed out finished tree i'm just going to hit on the keynotes here and you can follow along on your other monitor with the build guide feel free to use it it's exactly how i'd want this build at max level do your best to copy it this way so let's talk about our passives and what's important to us since our main damage source is our scorpion we're looking for poison damage damage over time uh damage over time from minions which we'll talk about in just a minute and strength and attunement all five of those things scale our damage really, really hard, and we want to find them. Second thing to note, since this is a beginner guide and you may be new, most skill trees for almost every single character, defense trumps damage, where eventually in the game you will get to one-shot mechanics and having as much health, resistances, and stuff that you can find in your skill tree is beneficial to your build. Most damage is more than enough to kill anything in the game just based on your items alone. With that being said, let's just talk about exactly what we're looking for. Since we have attunement and strength scaling, we're going to start with natural attunement, and this gives us resistances and cold resistance, and we are looking for a 75 cap, 75% 75 cap for all our resistances. Down here, we have Hunter's Restoration, which increases our health and gives us a heal every three seconds, or your next hit restores health. Over here, we want this for the increased minion damage, and so we can also heal our minions. And then over here, we're just taking some more health, companion health and companion revival speed, which you'll never use because the scorpion literally never dies. The rest is just to fill out the tree to the 20 points that we need. If you ever see this build with Berserker in it, that is a super late game build with very, very specific items. This is not that kind of guide. Then we're going to go into Beastmaster, which you picked as your specialty. And we're going to talk about Ursaine Strength. This is less damage from us and it gives us strength to scale our minion, our scorpion. Then down here, this is super important to the build, Artur's Loyalty. This gives us an 85% damage scaling and companion size. I don't know what companion size does, maybe it just makes it easier to see. Something you should know is Aspect of the Boar is a amazing perk and probably one of the best in the entire game. With everything that you see here, you gain a 30% damage reduction almost all the time and increase your health regen by 75%. Another thing for more health is here, Call of the Pack, just better heal for us, better heal for the Scorpion and more health for our Scorpion as well. We're coming over here for more strength and more chances to proc aspect of the boar because we will be mealing a lot as you guys saw in the video. Then over here, we are getting more vitality, more endurance. Endurance basically means after a certain point in our health pool, uh, we will take less damage after that break point does happen. And then lastly, over here, we have Viper Fangs and Aspects of the Viper. And I'm gonna take a minute to explain this because it is necessary to our build. Aspect of the Viper gives us 100% chance of poison and 100% increased damage over time. And Rattlesnake Rattlesnake gives us uh, a longer duration and poison penetration. So the last thing down here, Natural Bond, is a, another 75% scaler. So we have 85% uh, scaling here, 75% scaling here, and absolutely ridiculous scaling and uh, penetration and poison penetration 
and just aspect of the viper for poison hit and increased damage over time this is where all of our damage comes from so make sure if you do not want to follow this guide you grab one two three four perks everything else is basically up in the air if you want to do even more damage you can grab something like this uh this perk is not necessary until super end game uh you don't need to worry about that one and then for we went over to the druid tree you can uh, even though i did not pick druid i picked beastmaster for this class uh you can go all the way up to the chain on here and pick whatever perks you want so here i went more endurance more armor and then strength and attunement which is something that we want I'm probably going to put Claws of the Forest some points in here uh, just to play around with until I start actually dying, but that has not happened yet because Druids are super tanky. Then lastly, let's talk about the items. Again, my items are absolute trash. They are not good at all. Comparative to any of the other builds that I've done, this character is two days old and this is the best I have found. And I'm pushing level 92 content. I believe I was level like 71. So it's an amazing build and just follow along the best you can there will be a link down in the description below feel free to follow along have it up save it everything on that is best in slot and what you're looking for just do your best to get as close as you can uh, for our helmet we have attunement strength and whatever resistances we need our chest piece strength vitality which is just more life the rings are important to talk about we have uh these rings in particular give you 7 and 6% cooldown reduction. That is something we are looking for in our build because remember with swipe, we took the one that gives us a cooldown. We want to get that cooldown as low as possible. Down here, we have increased medical, uh, minion damage with some critical strike avoidance. We have, this is a new perk. These are new. These are called experimental perks. And this one, 46% increased minion damage and your minion teleports to you when you leap. So when we use Fury Leap, instead of him lollygagging and killing that one last enemy 64 miles away, he will just uh, travel and teleport with us, which allows us to keep consistent damage up a lot more. Uh, over here, just more damage over time and minion damage. And over here, we have poison damage, damage over time, and some resistances that I need. Lastly, our weapon is the mainstay of this. The purple perk you see here, 323 increased damage over time for our minions, is our bread and butter of our damage. It is one of the highest scaling, if not highest scaling damage over time things in the entire game. So you are looking for that on any single weapon. Again, you don't need to use a spear with this weapon, but this is how I enjoy using it with Serpent Strike. Uh, we have more poison damage on here. Critical Strike Multiplier doesn't do much for us. And increased stun chance is fine. Don't really need it too much uh the last thing we need to talk about is just our idols which are things you will eventually find there are rarities to these things and these are the higher end rarity ones i'm pretty sure the only thing you're really looking for is increased aspect of the viper effect to in give us even more poison damage and damage over the time that's everything lastly if you do not want to play with a uh, spear Feel free to get something like this, a sword and shield. This will give you almost double the effective health and you will be a super tanky wolf or wolf. You'll be a super tank of primalist and you'll basically never die until you get to super duper late game. Uh, again, poison damage, critical strike chance is fine. Doesn't really do anything for us. The implicit on here is increased damage over time, which is nice. And then we have stun chance, which I do enjoy and increased damage over time for minions. Bing, bang, boom. That is the entire video. That is the intro guide to Primalist Beastmaster, what I think you should run during your first playthrough of Last Epoch. You can take this build, you can not do a loot filter, you can pick up everything and say you want to play a different class, you want to play Warlock too. You could farm for Warlock gear, which is a harder class to survive on, on your Druid and just keep it going like that. I'm telling you, this build is absolutely ridiculous. I have never flown through this game as easy as I have this playthrough. This character is two days old and he's absolutely wrecking shit. Can't believe how fun this is. Enjoy. I will see you guys on Last Epoch. If you guys want to check me out, I'll be streaming three days a week over at twitch.tv slash around the Tic Tac. Hope to see you there. If not, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Tic Tac out.